Call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Mayor Rankin. Here. Vice Mayor Smith. Here. Councilmember Salaya. Here. Councilmember Hawkins. Here. Councilmember Montano. Here. Councilmember Walter. Here. Councilmember Woolrich. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. We'll have the invocation. Uh, Councilmember Woolridge will lead us, and then we'll remain standing for the pledge. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and for your grace. We thank you for your guidance and protection. And we ask you, Lord, to give us the wisdom and the knowledge to do those things that are right by all people. Help us to make decisions that will be beneficial to all. And Father, we thank you for protecting our town. Continue to go with us and stand by us. In your son Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is the first call to the public for public comment on issues within the jurisdiction of the town council. Count Council rules limit public comment to three minutes. Individual council members may, may respond to criticism made by those commenting, may ask staff to review a matter raised, or may ask that a matter be put on a future agenda. However, members of the council shall not discuss or take action on any matter during an open call to the public unless the matters are properly noticed for discussion and legal action. I have no cards. Or is there anyone from the public like to speak? Ruth, please. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ruth Harrison. Last Monday, at the end of the workday, two dogs were found in the yard of the Public Works Department on Ruggles. I understand that the local police called Pinal County Animal Control to remove them. During the last week of August, there were two separate dog attacks in downtown Florence. Local residents were chased and bitten by dogs that were unleashed and unrestrained. In one in incident, two dogs were taken for a walk without leashes. The dogs chased an, a neighbor who was feeding his horse. The man tried to run away, but one of the dogs bit him. In another incident, two teenage boys walking home from the library were attacked by a dog that ran into the street through an open gate. One of the victims was bitten and was taken to the hospital. A neighbor witnessed the attack and tried to defend the boys with a shovel. Last March, a friend of mine was walking on the sidewalk when she was attacked and bitten by a dog that ran out of its yard as its owner opened the gate to take a garbage can out to the street. The three biting dogs were removed by Pinal County Animal Control and kept under quarantine for 10 days. After 10 days, depending on the circumstances, biting dogs can be eligible to be returned to their owners if fines are paid. I, I propose that it's time for the town of Florence to assume responsibility for animal control within its jurisdiction. The town is growing in size and now consists of 66 square miles. The town is attempting to annex more area and along, uh, along with an additional four or 5,000 people. Now is the time to fix what has become an intolerable situation. The town needs to employ animal control officers, whose responsibility would be to deal with animal issues in a proactive way. The town should be responsible for licensing dogs that live in the town limits. The town should be proactive in making sure that animals are safely contained in outdoor enclosures. The town would then be in a position to adopt rules and regulations that protect the well-being of the animals and the safety of the public. The town wants to attract visitors to events. The town wants to encourage people to move here. The town wants to attract economic development. To do that, Florence needs to be attractive and safe. The town is in the process of improving Main Street, and it is making strides in the way it handles bulk trash. Both projects are much appreciated. Now it is time to pay attention to steps that will further improve the quality of life in Florence. For the sake of the animals and for the safety and well-being of residents and visitors alike, Florence needs to take responsibility for having its own animal control. The time is now. Thank you. Thank you. 
Does any other member of the audience have any com public comment? <clears throat> Seeing no movement, I'll call, call the public. Lisa. Item 6, public hearings and presentations. Item 6A, public hearing on ordinance number 600-13 and ordinance of the town of Florence, <coughs> Pinal County, Arizona, amending the Florence Code of Ordinances, Title 15, Land Usage, Chapter 152, Medical Marijuana, Section 152.02, Definitions, and Section 152.04, Distance Separation Requirements. Case number PZC 27-13, Ordinance. Mark Eckhoff will be handling the um, presentation prior to the public hearing. <coughs> Mark. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, the staff has a text amendment to propose to you. Uh, essentially, we wanted to be proactive in, in addressing, trying to address at least some of the concerns that have come up repeatedly as we've seen conditional use permits for medical marijuana dispensaries presented to the Council. Uh, that was addressed in a number of, number of ways. And I'll just give you some of the highlights. Obviously, by now, we, we know a lot of the history of how we got to this point and how the law was established in the state and what we've, what we've done as a reaction to that. The changes that we'd like to, to propose tonight are uh, highlighted in your report. Uh, a, a few items. There are some changes to some of the definitions, adding clarity also adding correctional facility and halfway house to the list of sensitive uses. As we've seen in a, a couple of times now, the correctional facilities and, and in the last case, the halfway house came out in strong opposition to a medical marijuana dispensary. Um, so that is, that is um, being, being proactive, we've added those as sensitive uses. So they automatically now would have to meet this minimum separation distance of a sensitive use. Um, and then also on the definition, on the, uh, on the uh, sensitive use distance separation, that's been mod modified from 660 feet to 500 feet. 500 feet is the number that comes from the state standard uh, in regards to the distance from separation from schools from medical marijuana operation. And that was put in this code amendment universally <coughs> so that it's 500 feet instead of 660 feet. Um, also, we've, we've heard in some of the hearings that we've had before medical marijuana dispensaries that there was a lot of concern about how the shoes would be, how the shoes might represent the town or the, or the image of the town or potentially the compatibility of the shoes with other uses along our major, major corridors such as Hunt Highway, Felix Road, 287, 70, 79. So we've added an additional buffering requirement that there's a 500-foot buffer from these frontages, which, as you know, would have addressed the uh, concern that was presented on the, on the uh, proposed Big O application. Uh, and then the fourth, the fourth item is probably the most unique item, but what we've what we've tried to do or what we've tried to propose in there is that if a medical marijuana dispensary uh, were to go in a hospital or other similar similar medical office building that it would be allowed to go in that in that building with a conditional use permit if the building is zone B, B2 occupied as a prison or medical office buildings um, and then if it were to do that they some of the locational criteria would be modified Namely, the only criteria that would apply would be the state criteria, that is the 500-foot separation from a hospital, from, I'm sorry, from a medical marijuana dispensary to a public or private, private school. Um, the thinking was that, as we've heard the testimony presented, as we've seen these applications come forward, uh, there was a lot of concern or a lot of um, comments made that this was medical marijuana dispensary was truly a professional medical uh, type of type of use no different than any other medical office or or a pharmacy or something to that extent um, we believe that the, the pathway to ensure that that is as um, as accurate a statement as possible is if it, that type of use was lo actually located in a hospital um, and if it were in a hospital, then you're going to mitigate a lot of the compatibility issues that, you, that you've seen with past applications. Um, that said, 
any medical marijuana dispensary in the town of Florence would still have to go through the conditional use permit process and the compatibility of that specific uh, use at a given location would have to be would have to be addressed by the mayor and council the conditional use permit could be approved or could be denied based on the compatibility so those are some changes that we're proposing and I'd be happy to add clarifications and, and, and address your questions. Any member of the council have a question for Mark? Sure. Um, you know, uh, probably within a week or, or two after we discussed this last, um, we had a, a headline story in the news where a, a person that had their card and was uh, doing their own growing had a home invasion and the guy ended up having to shoot one of the suspects in the face. I, th I think it's ridiculous that we're creating all these eggshells and obstructing the ability that people with medical needs uh, are not able to receive them in, uh, in an easier way. We're setting up hurdles. I think that uh, uh, I disagree with adding new sensitive terminology, uh, separation requirements, I, I think it should be to the state standard, which was the 500 feet. And then um, to prevent them from operating their business in an, in an area that's, that's uh, uh, ease of access to Fat Lake Sun Highway, State Route 287, 79, 79B. We're, we're just pushing these people further and further away. It's, it's, I think it's disgraceful. Um, the, the whole purpose of, of creating a facility for uh, medical marijuana, the distribution center, is to eliminate the ability for uh, just your normal resident to have the ability to grow that in, inside of the house, whether it's right next to the school or right next to a church. Uh, with a with a medical marijuana facility, you have a place that's that uh, is controlled. It's regulated. It's right in the open. So if there's something that's going to go wrong, somebody's going to see it, and we're going to know about it. Um, I, I I think that it's just a shame that we're we're pushing people that have medical needs further and further away from doing normal business like any other person with a medical condition could go to. Walgreens or another pharmacy for. I can't support this. There's some things in it that that make sense, but they're but adding the other stuff. You know, we're just creating eggshells to dance around. Tom, I have two questions, and all I need is a yes or no. Number one, is there any way a person can put in a medical marijuana dispensary in the historic district, yes or no? No. Second question is, it's 500 foot. See nothing wrong with it. But what I see wrong is you're saying 500 foot from a residential district. Now what happens to persons that's had a house on property or an acre or whatever for years and then they turn around and say since you're agricultural you're not a residential district that we can put a medical marijuana dispensary right next to your house difference between 500 feet from a residential district or 500 feet from a residence is what I'm asking I believe it says residential district. I, I believe you're correct. And I see houses where it could go in right next to their house. And I'm not really happy with that. However, the poverty feet and what you've got in here, I'm all with, except that's one I'm not in favor of. And 
What are we classifying as a hospital to have it sold in? In other words, there's some older hospitals in town that are closed now or are part of the county now, but they're not hospitals. Are those classified and could be a hospital or just the two hospitals that we actually have and have used recently? The, the two hospitals that we have, one that is on the process of opening and one that is open. However, the one that is open in Anthem is not zone B2, so it would not be subject to so this. We only have one that's one in town. One hospital downtown that's zone B2. And how close is that to residential? Uh, that property is immediately abutting a residential subdivision, um, but there are no homes immediately adjacent to it because that's the unfinished property. Is it within 500 feet of that residential property? The subdivision? District? Yes, sir. I agree with Tom Salai on one thing, and that is if they could sell medical marijuana in a regular drugstore where it's taken care of and handled right, I think it'd be perfect. But to try to put it with these regulations, with none of these are going to fit because only one hospital is too close to a district. I don't understand why we're going through all this when we don't need it in the first or can't use it in the first place. That's only my own opinion and I, that's what I've got to say. Well, I think uh, myself, I think the uh, hospital or a medical clinic would be ideal. I don't know how anybody could argue with that. I mean, you know, they're not going to be uh, sitting around. One thing I do have a problem with, and I probably should have brought it up before, but I, it wouldn't have done any good anyway. But uh, on the whereas, portion of this ordinance we've got the second two paragraphs are making claims in there that I'm not I don't it said and then it, then it follows up saying that the town the mayor and the council agree with this data uh, I've never seen this uh, California uh, task force report from 2009 <clears throat> And I haven't seen on the news media or uh, in the paragraph before that, it claims that there's been all kinds of crime increases and, and uh, all kinds of bad things because of uh, marijuana dispensaries. Uh, I don't think the marijuana dispensaries have been here long enough for, for us to uh, even come to a conclusion on it. And if they're run properly as the, uh, as the state requires, uh, I don't, like I say, I don't, there's a, there's a lot of statements made there about people, uh, uh, what does it say? It increases burglaries, robberies, violence, illegal sales of marijuana, uh, and use of marijuana by minors without a medical need. Now, in the immediate area surrounding the dispensaries, well, I don't know where they came up with that, and I, I, I would like to see some, uh, some documentation uh, relating to that, proving that, that that's the case. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that part of, the, uh, of that being put into this ordinance. Uh, but the rest of the uh, ordinance I have no problem with because uh, that's probably the only way we're going to get a dispensary in here. So uh, that's my feeling on it. But I would like to see those two paragraphs pulled out because I have not seen any of that. And it, and it states in that second paragraph that the mayor council, Lawrence, finds these uh, data and conclusions in, in, of experiences to justify the implementation of the amended regulatory zoning and safety measures. 
Okay. Like I said, I haven't seen any of that. I mean, I haven't seen any reports on it or anything. You know, so. Okay. Tara? Okay. I appreciate the hard work and effort that you did and put, put forward into this. My, um, my stance is on the perception of our town. And we want to make sure that if this facility does go into our town, that it's not something that we're associated with a prison town, a marijuana town. We don't want to have that connotation. It's legal. It is, uh, it's, it's medicinal. It's no different. There's, I, I would venture to say there's probably more people abusing medical, uh, regular prescription drugs by far. But it's not legal on all levels. And what message is that sending to our kids? It's still technically an illegal substance. It, it's not, not medicinally, it's not. No. Federally, it is. Ruben? Federal law, it is. Well, the, uh, I guess uh, to that point, uh, this United States Attorney General Holder, uh, a week and a half ago, made it made publicly known that the feds are not going to mess around with anybody. But this is different, what I'm going to say right now. But he's saying, being Colorado and Washington legalized marijuana for recreational use, he said the feds are washing their hands of it as long as the states regulate it. Now that that's public. Now that was that that was in the paper. That is in the news, and that's a fact. Now I would say it's probably a matter of time before the feds change the laws. It's just that he's stating now, so that the states and everybody can quit wondering. You know, where are we at? You know, it's a, it's against federal law. Well, yes, it is. But they're stated that they are not going to do anything as long as the states regulate it. But that, we're, we're discussing medicinal marijuana here. We're not even getting into the recreational. That's a whole other ball game down the road. But I think that people deserve the opportunity to use it. Once again, I said at the last time we, this, this came up, you know, there's, 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 there's people that have benefited greatly from this. And anybody, you know, just because, uh, you know, there, there are certain religions that don't believe in medicine, period. But do we outlaw pharmacies? Do we tell people you can't you, because, uh, you know, a certain group disagrees with it? We're going to withhold their right to uh, have proper uh, medical help? You know, I, but whatever. I also look at how many people. I don't think it would be derogatory for the town. Every town damn near, I think right now, in Arizona, I think we're the only ones right now that have, uh, that are, or that, that have gone against it. Uh, Casa Grande's got one or two. Coolidge has got one. I, I believe Eloy's either got one or opening up one. Uh, Tempe. Phoenix, uh, Scottsdale, uh, and you know, I don't see Scottsdale, I don't see all the corporations bailing out or people abandoning town. Uh, it's well, if they're opening one, then that would solve the problem that we're looking at because I believe the law states that you don't need to hold a card if there's a medicinal marijuana facility within 50 miles of your home. So that would solve the problem of, you know, the person next door growing them in their house. And I also reflect back on that evening when the people came out to speak. Not one resident from the town of Florence that was a cardholder spoke to us that evening. Okay. Bill, hang on. Ruben? I had a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is distance on number two. I have no problem with the other one. Distance on number two, it talks about uh, 500 Ruben, can you turn on your mic, please? Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah. let me ask the question again. On number two, it talks about the distance of 500 feet. Is that building to building, or is it perimeter of the site to the next building? It's, it's property lines. It's wherever the property line is of, of, of the 
of the parcel is where the use is located. Okay. And my next question is, can you give me which cities in Pinal County that currently do have a medicinal marijuana dispensary? I, I can tell you with certainty that, that Casa Grande and Eloy and Coolidge have them. Uh, I don't believe that one is I don't believe that one is open in Queen Creek, but I can tell you that we have th those in neighboring cities. So actually, we are within the 25-mile distance already. That nobody legally can be growing marijuana or medicinal marijuana within their house under the caregiver provision, because you're within 25 miles of a dis of a dispensary. So what what I'm looking at is we now have we're within 10 miles or so to Coolidge. So we have a radius around us of nearly 15 miles. All of all of all of our corporate limits is is, is covered by from the Coolidge dispensary, um, and then also there's dispensaries that are that are to the north of us where they're going to come down into our north planning planning area. So from yes that that perspective we're covered under the 25 mile of multiple, but we still have a unique chaw and and a dispensary is still permitted under this under the state law for this for this job. We're also within 10 miles of a grocery store, but people want to be able to shop within the city limits. That's the only question. I have. Yeah. A couple of questions for you. It's me. Oh, excuse me, Valerie. I, I forgot you talked about Yeah, I know. Go ahead. Although Mark said what I was going to say about the 25 mile limit. And I think, again, we are talking about location and not the benefits of medical marijuana. I'm sure it does have benefits, but we're still talking location. And that's a topic of discussion, if I'm not mistaken. And just to reiterate that, there should not be anybody in Florence with a car growing it in their homes because of the proximity of those other dispensaries. That's it. I, I think, if I can add one more comment, I think one of the things that you also need to keep in mind in looking at this that you might not be aware of is that hospital is pretty much directly across the street from the property of the school. Yes, it is. Which hospital? Right. Yeah, right. The one on Adamsville Road. Yeah. What? Okay, Mark, I got a couple questions for you. If I heard you right in the opening, this, the addition of, of the 500 feet from the, either the school or a residential area is handled, would be handled under variance if, it, if an application was applied for to go into the building on Adamsville Road. Is that correct? Well, in a, hosp in a hospital scenario or a medical office building scenario where the building is predominantly utilized for medical use. So an MOB, medical office building, or a hospital. What we're seeing in the proposed ordinance is that they would be granted essentially an automatic variance on some of the locational criteria, they, but we cannot override the state criteria, so they still have to meet the 500 foot from a public or private school. And I think that right now Florence Unified School District's boundary comes all the way to Adamsville Road. And that, and if that not, is, if not, you still got the residential right behind the hospital. So, and not, not hopefully that it wouldn't happen. But uh, it's happened before. What happens if they do locate one there, and the hospital ends up closing down? Is it able to stand on its own? Well, a few, few questions. And, and one thing is, we looked at the location of the of the school, and the property that the school is on is does actually meet the 500 feet the school however does own an additional property that comes up to Adamsville it's a separate parcel that doesn't have the school on it and uh, we've we've been informed that by by attorneys who looked into this and, and contacted the uh, Arizona Department of Health Services that they go by where the school is is located and making and making that determination not additional properties that they may own. Now that's something, should a case be presented to the hospital, obviously that's something I bet is probably going to be challenged on a few different different levels. 
Uh, where, where are they in developing that? Because I remember seeing conceptual drawings. We do know that they own the property, but we don't have any development plans in, and this in the state at least, at this point is suggesting that that is not a school school boundary. So, um, if we were to bring forward an application to you for the school, we would certainly address a few things. Not, number one, it would be very clear that should should a should the state consider the property to be utilized for a school or should a school ever be developed on that adjacent property the use the medical marijuana dispensary use would become null and null and void uh, number two the use would be contingent upon the building actually being occupied for a hospital or medical use and not just going into an empty building and or going in when the hospital is running and then if the hospital went out of business the dispensary is left but isn't it all also just a, a moot point school because it's already within the 500 foot to a residential so it can't be there anyway well this, this is a good point vice mayor in in this in this ordinance though they would be they would be granted leeway on that on that provision should the council be inclined to go in in that in that direction so the other scenario is that at some point we have very few medical facilities but in writing this it's also anticipating at some point that maybe there are other hospital or medical office buildings that would be two that would meet be zone B2 that would meet the criteria and or they could go into another property that wasn't a hospital uh, that was zone B2 or I1 and, and then meet all that buffering criteria so um, there still remain locations so even once you add the buffering on the on the street and, and once you make some other modifications, there still are other locations in the community that they, that a dispensary or cultivation facility could go go into. Uh, but quite frankly, you you are just candidly you you are talking about building something a little bit more remote, and you're talking about a property that will be completely undeveloped. So you would have to start fresh on development and infrastructure. From my perspective, we're painting these people into or this service into a distal corner um, it, it, you know I personally I'd rather have it right on Main Street with a bunch of lights pointed at it and say come rob me if you think you can get away with it and make them pay for the uh, security that goes around it okay going back mark I have a problem with uh, section 52.04 the, the uh, distance separation requirements uh, for the Hunt Highway Felix Corridor State Route 287 and State Route 7079B. Uh, I think if that was eliminated from it, I wouldn't have any problem with the ordinance. Uh, you know, we've sat here and we've talked about where it goes and where it should not go, and, and we had or, a prior ordinance that we went under. I just read an article in the paper about Scottsdale. They opened up their first one. Uh, and didn't hear no, you know, they've, they've got people up there. They've got more people than we do. They have more commerce than we do. They have probably better availability to do researching on, on uh, the state law and their city ordinances and how it goes. And I was very interested that, uh, and, and if we stop and think about it, uh, it's like they said, they're not advertising. The only advertisement they do is on the web page. There's no big flashing lights outside saying this is a medical marijuana dispensary or come smoke a joint with me or anything like that. Uh, it's the people that utilize medical marijuana, they know where they're at. They don't need the advertisement to find them. Uh, the needs of medical marijuana is very, and this, again, this does not go to the, to, uh, what people believe as far as the medical uh, benefits. Adds benefits to it. Uh, we're only talking about the uh, location and if we want to allow it in our town. I think every major metropolitan area in the valley is, is authorized it. I think, every, I think Tucson's got it. Of course, Tucson's a little liberal what we are. Uh, but all your municipalities have located it. 
As far as it being against the federal law bill, I agree with you that what uh, Secretary Holder said, uh, or the AG Holder, uh, I read that article too. Uh, and it's a matter of state's right is the way the federal government is looking at it at this point. Uh, I hope I'm never in a position that I have to attempt to use it for its purpose. But if, it, if I do become into that position, I would hope that I would be able to use it, as Tommy said, uh, you know, we, we need it. If you need it, you need it. I'm not worried about the advertising. I'm not worried about the signage. Uh, I am concerned, though, about taking it off of the areas that we're talking about there due to the fact that in those areas, there's a lot of places that would fit the, the ordinance without having to go to a variance or a conditional use permit along the, because it hadn't been developed. There's no homes around it. There's no uh, schools around it at this point. So I have no problem, you know, that third section is, is, is my concern on it. Uh, the 500 feet, I would like a, a further, I would like to see some uh, documentation on the state's opinion if it's a school building or school property. I think that we, that would be beneficial to the council in making a decision on the 500 foot. And I don't know how to build an ordinance that's not going to call for a conditional use permit or a variance for this type of business to go in. <laughs> you know, you have uh, what you're doing is creating an ordinance here that's still going to have to have a conditional use or a variance uh, go with it. It's not addressing the, the, the finalization of the situation, if you see what I mean. I mean, but for where we're at with the the possibility of going into the Adamsville site of the hospital. Uh, I know that that's going to have to happen. But again, as far as uh, I'm concerned, without that third paragraph there, I, I don't have any problem with it. If you can show us uh, or show us evidence that the state does recognize the 500 feet from the school, and uh, instead of the building and the property, I think that that would be beneficial to us. Any other questions of staff? Okay, at this time, I'm open to public hearing. Anybody that has any questions or any comments that they'd like to speak on the medical marijuana, please come forward. Zoning. See no movement, I'll close the public hearing. Lisa. Item 6B, presentation by the Greater Lawrence Chamber of Commerce, recognizing the business of the month. And we, uh, I'll make a proclamation of the mayor's position to support the start by deleting public awareness campaign. Good evening, Oh, mayor. wait a minute. We were doing the wrong one. I'm on the, I, I skipped you, didn't I? That's okay. Sorry. <laughs> Can go ahead, I go? Please. Okay, please. thank you. Good evening, mayor and council members. Uh, it's with great pleasure tonight that we uh, would like to tell you about our business of the month choice, and it is uh, Golden Eagle Distributors. They are located at 1000 North Jefferson Street in Casa Grande. Uh, Mike Rahalia is their branch manager. Unfortunately, Mike can't be with us this evening. He has some commitments with uh, his corporate people that are in town. Uh, Mike has been extremely supportive of the chamber. Uh, he has been very uh, in has helped us tremendously with our casino nights and our first Thursdays. He services our local businesses with their beverage needs and all of Pinal County. Uh, we're very grateful to have him as a business member. He's actually been supporting our casino nights for the last three years. So on his behalf, I apologize that he cannot be here for him, and I will accept the award for him. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, and please, uh Send our congratulations for being chosen and also thank him for everything he does. Thank you. Thank you. Item 6C, while, while um, Chamber was walking up for the presentation, the mayor did pro proclaim uh, support for the Start Believing Public Awareness Campaign. Item 
Consent agenda, all items indicated by an asterisk <coughs> will be handled by a single vote as part of the consent agenda, unless a council member or the member of the public objects at the time the agenda item is called. Item A, authorization to forward a favorable recommendation to the Arizona Department of Liquor License and Control regarding the Coolidge Elks Lodge 2350 application for a special event liquor license on October 6, 2013 for the HAMC Tucson Demolition Derby. Item B, receive and file the following board and commission, commission minutes. Um, one, March 12, 2013, Historic District Advisory Commission minutes. Two, the June 6, 2013, Planning and Zoning Commission minutes. Mayor, Member, Council, that is your consent agenda for this evening. Does any member of the council or the public have anything they'd like taken off of the consent agenda? Seeing no movement, I need a motion. Make a motion to accept the consent agenda as written. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda as written. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 8, unfinished business. Item 8A, discussion approval, disapproval of ordinance number 598-13, an ordinance of the town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, amending title 15, land usage, chapter 150, development codes, section 150.8. 280 development impact fees and sections 150 150.282 150.282 150.282 150.284 150.285 150.286 150.288 150.289 and 150.290 first reading of this ordinance was held on August 5th 2013 Hi. Good evening, Mayor and Town Council. Uh, this ordinance and the uh, many steps that preceded it have been heard by Council over the past few months. Uh, tonight is second reading. I have nothing to add other than uh, we did reach out as requested to the HBA and Pulte and received no response. So we assume they're okay with it. Okay. Any member of the Council have a question for Mike? Hearing none, I'll call for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number 598-13. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance 598-13. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Item 8B, discussion approval, disapproval of ordinance number 601-13. An ordinance of the Town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, amending the Florence Code of Ordinances, Title 15, Land Usage, Chapter 150, Development Code, Sections 150.031, Defined Work, Section 150.047, District Use Regulation Tables, Section 150.055, Manufactured Home Subdivisions, MHS, and Sections 150.068, Recreational Vehicle Parks and or Subdivisions. For Planning and Zoning Commission Ordinance Number 16-13 Ordinance. First reading was held on September 3rd, 2013. Mr. Eckhoff will make a presentation. Anything additional, Mark? Mayor and Council, just, just to highlight that you that you did get a supplemental memo to address some of the questions that came up at the last at the last meeting. <clears throat> and the recommendation on the age is is remains five years based on based on our findings. And also, we did find that it was pretty standardized that, that manufactured homes be ground set, so that was placed into the, into the ordinance as well. But I'd be happy to address any of our findings or, or the ordinance as a whole. So, so the ordinance is back at us again with the five years? It is five years. I, yes. I think that's pretty generous considering some of the results that you guys uh, came up with from the other, other uh, municipalities or some that don't even allow them. Um, some of them that want them uh, built on site or put together on site. And I believe that I think there was another one that was uh, three to six years. So I think five years is pretty generous. I just have concern that you take a manufactured home that ran you nearly $100,000 five years ago, and now you're going to say, well, you can't even move it on to the Florence City town limits. I think that's ridiculous. You're looking at something that's only five years old. Any other comment? 
Okay. Hearing none, any motion? Make a motion to make a motion to approve ordinance 601-13. Any second? second? We have a motion to second to adopt ordinance 601-13. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Aye. aye. Or aye. Have a roll call vote, please. Okay. Councilmember Salaya? Aye. Councilmember Woolwich? Aye. Councilmember Walter? Aye. Councilmember Hawkins? Nay. Councilmember Montano? Nay. Vice Mayor Smith? Nay. Mayor Rankin? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. The second call of the public, anybody has any comments? Refer, remember the, how I did, opened it up? Seeing no movement, I'll close the call of the public. Call of the council. Sarah? I have nothing tonight. Bill? Well, uh, on uh, the dog, the, the uh, dog catcher or animal control thing, uh, I feel that the, that the county does a pretty good job, of, and, and at this time, I can't really, I don't think we'd have a, I think we'd have a hard time justifying starting a new department for the town just for animal control. I think the, uh, we do have ordinances that do cover the uh, uh, animals. We have uh, lease laws and everything, and, and the only the only thing is we don't actually capture the animal or hold the animal, but we can s give citations at this time, Ruth. The town does have ordinances and everything to uh, to control the animals. So uh, really, we're just talking about uh, who picks the animal up or or warehouses it if it bites somebody but but we the town does have ordinances on animal control Larry. i don't have anything to know. tommy the last meeting i didn't get to discuss too much uh the uh arizona league of cities and towns that uh, we went to uh, I, in participating in that i had an opportunity to go around the the city and, and, and look at the the arts program that they had there basically what they did at, at, in the city's infancy they established a one percent for the arts and uh, attached that to some of the development uh, agreements that they had with uh, any of the new development that, that was brought in and they apply that towards uh, either on site or they contribute towards some type of an arts program uh, it's very organized uh, program you can go on orovalley.com and take a look at a virtual art gallery tour and I think that uh, as we are hopefully in the process of becoming a, a, a town that's going to expand I'd like to work with the town staff in exploring uh, some type of uh, opportunity in, in, in doing something like that so um, it's it's a really neat project and you know if you have any feedback on it feel free to contact me or take a look at Oro Valley's website and see what you think but I think it'd be a really neat program for the town while we're while we're getting ready to start uh, expanding fingers crossed yeah a couple of things and the first one is I think uh, Main Street is looking really well with the new curbing that's there I like the way that it presents something different uh, the second thing is a uh, fire chief should introduce our new fire marshal Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Um, I brought uh, your new fire marshal, John Kemp, with me today. Um, John comes to us from Central Arizona College, where he served as the director of the fire science program. Uh, he, prior to that, he worked for the Gila River Fire Department for many years as a battalion chief and also was a fire marshal for the city of Scottsdale. Welcome aboard. You got anything? Uh, I knew it. He wants to be a politician already, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to thank everybody for the warm welcome, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm equipped, ready to go. Um, I still have some more people to meet, but thank you very much. 
do a good job for us. That's all we ask. Thank you, sir. The only question I have and on the animals, I understand them, I have dogs, but I don't think the town is doing the correct job on the fencing of properties because some fences aren't even fences and animals are loose on the street and I think the animal control, the county animal control does a good job. You can call the police department any time and they'll respond or have animal control respond to take care of a loose animal. But when you have fences that aren't even fences that are made of glass windows and God knows what else they hang up along there and the animals can get out and get out on the street, I think that's where we're letting our community down. I would like the town to look at that because we need to correct the fencing. Those people that have dogs must have it fenced so those dogs are cared for and not allowed to run the streets. Thank you. Uh, uh, going back to the main street, what's going on, I'd just like to thank people for the cooperation and putting up with the construction, not only the residents, but the business owners who have taken a hit on it because of the, of the construction. We hope that after the construction is done, it will create, help create more business for the owners and uh, we you know, really appreciate that. Uh, not too many complaints yet, but if they don't get it done here pretty quick, I'm gonna start pulling Wayne's hair. <laughs> oh, he doesn't have a heck of a lot to pull, I guarantee you that. And I guess mustache, Wayne, uh, tonight when you go to bed and you think about it and, and uh, think about the people back in Washington, D.C. who lost their lives today because of some idiot that went crazy. Also think of the people in, uh, and Ruth, you want to call me, I, I call him an idiot because he was, anybody do something like that can't be too damn smart. Uh, also keep in mind the people of Colorado and New Mexico who are going through a tremendous tremendous national disaster up there with the flooding and the public safety officials are out there working to save their lives that can't get to them that want to get to them because the weather conditions can't and think of the agony that they must be going through we had a pre-conference meeting uh, out at uh, oasis we're going to have our meeting on the 5th of october on the annexation uh, council members, you need to try to arrange your schedule so that you can be there with us uh, for the annexation signing. We're going to have more information coming available, advertisement or so forth as that. Uh, but the annexation of that area is going to be very important to the growth of the town of Florence, uh, to the direction we're going, and what we need to do here to make Florence a place that will be able to draw economic development as we go along. The size we are right now, it's harder than heck. Uh, we don't have the place to do it. So we'll be working on that. You know the discussion? Call for the question. I need a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We're adjourned.